sometimes my readers actually know more than I do. So I was at the Edinburgh Festival last year and somebody asked me that and I said it was 11 and a reader at the front said, no, it's 12. <laughs> kind of listed them all off, so who knows how many, but quite a few. Quite a few. Anything else? How many books have you wrote that are unpublished? Okay, that's a great question. Um, there are no books unpublished um, for your age group that I've written. Okay, they're all apart from apart from one that that's part of the the Daisy Star series, which is being edited now and will be published very soon. But if you mean, did I write any books that didn't actually get published? Um, there was, I, I did, when my children were very little, I wrote a picture book script and I did some illustrations for it and I thought I'd have a go at writing a picture book, but I actually didn't really do anything with it or send it anywhere. And then a little bit later than that, I wrote a book um, that I thought might be good for five or six year olds and I really enjoyed writing it, but I wasn't, um, I wasn't really, I didn't think that I would send it anywhere either. I didn't really think that it was something I wanted to be published or, I didn't feel like that about it, um, because always I think somehow it, it was it was for your age group that I wanted to write always. And um, Dizzy was actually the first book that I managed to finish, and it was the first book that that was that was actually printed. And and that sounds a little bit crazy. However, I do have drawers and drawers full of books for your age group that never got past chapter two or three. So if you count them, then there must have been dozens. But um, for me, it was a real, real effort to kind of get that discipline and make sure I could write a, a book collect story because I knew how to do the short story thing. I, I had trained myself to do that, but writing a book collect story was a massive challenge, really. And it wasn't until Dizzy that I kind of cracked it. There's, there is no easy solution, by the way. It's just discipline and forcing yourself to keep going. But yeah, I was kind of lucky because once I did finally write a whole book, um, it got published and everything kind of happened as if by magic. So it's pretty cool. Um, what inspired you to write books? I think um, I, I'm the kind of person who loves to make up stories. I'll, I'll be making up stories in my head. I'll get little bits and pieces of inspiration all around me. And those ideas and sparks of inspiration sometimes turn into a story. And um, if you've got a story in your head, it's really, really nice to put it on paper because that way you then get to share it, maybe with a teacher, um, maybe with family, or maybe if you're published with a whole lot of other people too. And that's really, really fun. Cool. So again, I'll explain a little bit later on about how stories can be developed and how those sparks of an idea can be turned into stories. What is your favourite book you've written? Okay, definitely Cherry Crush at the moment, but I'm very, very fickle and my favourite book changes pretty much all the time. Whichever the newest book is, that's likely to be my favourite, so that sounds a bit cheesy, but it's kind of quite exciting. Um, when a story turns from something that you've only kind of had in your imagination, only you could see it, only you knew about those characters, only you knew what was going to happen, then you get it down on paper and maybe your editor knows that's kind of, you know, a step further. And then suddenly it's a real book with a beautiful cover and it's a proper thing that you can hold in your hands and everybody <laughs> all around the country can read it and share in the story. And I still get a real kick from seeing the idea turn into a real proper book, so that's, it's generally the latest book. Um, had you always dreamed of being an author when you were little? Yes, since forever I think, just, just for always, I've, since I was much younger than any of you. I, I, as soon as I knew there was such a thing as an author, I thought, yeah, that sounds good. So, definitely the big dream. Are any of your characters based on real people? That's a really good question. It's actually probably a really bad idea to base a character on a real person because you could get into trouble. But one thing that happens, although you might not intend it to, you know, you might not mean really to, to base a character on somebody real, sometimes little tiny threads of, of real people might kind of sneak into a character. And I can think of two characters who are definitely very, very very much based on real people and one of them I meant it to be that way and one I really had no clue that I was doing it at all. 
Um, and the first is a character in Dizzy and also in Lucky Star. It's the character of it's the dog character called Leggett, okay? And she's based 100% on my dog. Okay, my dog's called Kelpie and she looks a bit like a toilet brush on legs. She's kind of and every day I used to I used to take her for a walk first thing in the morning until I decided I would have a really good go at writing my, my first book and I decided I wouldn't take her for a walk until I'd written a thousand words, okay? So that meant more like lunchtime or sometimes even right in the middle of the afternoon. And my poor dog used to look at me with a really sad face, the way dogs do, and kind of like, why aren't you taking me for a walk? And I felt so guilty that I put her into the story. I just changed the way she looked a little bit. And so, you know, so you can kind of do it with, with an animal, with a pet. So I did it that way. But apparently there is another character as well in Driftwood, a character of the art teacher, Miss Quinn. And I have been told that that character is very, very like me. And I had no clue that I was doing that at all. I just apparently wrote a story where, you know, I used to be an art teacher and very similar things happened to me actually as, uh, you know, in Driftwood, Miss Quinn has three kittens hidden in the stock cupboard where children from her class have taken them and hidden them in there and she looks after them and hides them from the head teacher. Something very like that happened when I was teaching too and uh, two girls from my class managed to rescue a Yorkshire Terrier from the field. It had been there all night and it was just kind of lying there like this and they hid it in the stock cupboard and um, I was the fool who had to take it home at the weekend. It managed to eat the whole of my living room over the weekend which was a little bit touchy. So sometimes the things that happen in real life can actually evolve and turn through your, you know, you put them through a bit of a daydreaming process through your imagination and they might come out the other end as a story, as fiction. So hopefully nobody, you, you know, you're not writing about real things that happen but you're kind of using those real things as a jumping off point. And how long does it normally take you to write a book? Okay, another really good question. Um, with the first few books it perhaps took three or four months to write a story and I was still teaching art, I was an art teacher at the time, and also um, I was working as the agony aunt of a young teen magazine called Shout, so I kind of was quite busy, but I managed to still, oh yeah, mm, that's the one, <laughs> yeah, and um, you know, I still managed to get those books written in three or four months. Now these days, I'm a full-time author, I don't, I don't work for Shout anymore, and I don't teach art anymore, sadly. Um, and it somehow takes me six or seven months to write a book these days. And life is kind of really, really chaotic. Uh, a lot of touring, a lot of visiting book festivals, a website that needs a lot of upkeep, and several books in a year, to, uh, at least two books in a year, sometimes three. So all of those things keep me really, really busy. And it just takes me a little bit longer. My editor's often on the other end of the phone saying, is that book anywhere near ready yet? Really yeah. politely. Yeah. Thank you very much. That was very, very, very brilliant. They were lovely questions. Thank you very much.